Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Monday, April the 3rd, Board of Public Works and Safety Agenda. As a reminder, we are also recording the meeting for uh, City of Madison YouTube channel. You can view it now or view it later. So, Clerk, may we have a roll call, please? Amy? Carlo? Here. Eagling? Here. Courtney? Present. Council, via, or Council. Board of Public Works, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes from March the 20th? So we'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes as printed. <coughs> I'll second that motion. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. And moving on now with claims. Mayor had an opportunity to review the claims. I'll make a motion that the claims be approved as submitted. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Introduce uh, Brian Jackson, our superintendent of utilities here with an adjustment for Amanda Hook. Uh, yeah, this is an adjustment for Amanda Hook at 4934 West State Road 256. The actual owner of the property is uh, David Beddingham. Mr. Beddingham's here to go over with uh, you everything that had occurred at the property. They are actually on Kent Water and a member of our county sewer. So it'll be a yeah. good morning, Dave. Morning. So we got a notice from Kent Water saying that they were switching the water off because it flooded. The, the building was empty. Um, Amanda runs a daycare there, but hadn't used it for a couple of weeks. I was over in England at the time. It was during the big freeze on, uh, just before Christmas, and the main pipe coming in, the water pipe burst, filled up crawl space into the neighbor's yard and um, that's when we realized there was a huge problem and um, we had about six inches of water in the crawl space water in the neighbor's yard and, but it didn't go into the sewage system mm -hmm. pretty much so what we're approving here or looking at brian is a waiver of the sewer charges correct correct because okay. they're on kilt water yeah and he's repaired it already right so. yeah. Okay. And Brian, have you looked at this and everything's in order? Yes, it's fine. And yeah. this is, for those who are watching or listening, this is consistent with anyone who is on either City of Madison or Kent or another water company where we provide sewer. So we're making an adjustment to the sewer bill, not the water bill. Um, uh, board, do you have any questions for David? Uh, the repairs that you were made, did you, did you also have the line insulated so this would not happen again? No, we didn't. That's a good point. No. We came to. Okay. Back or I can do it myself. I like just suggest that you there. would. Yeah. Good point. Okay, I will make a motion that we approve the adjustment. Okay, thank you. I'll second Carl's motion. Any discussion? Comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All aye. opposed? David, thank you. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. No one finished business. Uh, now we can move on to new business. Brian, are you handling the, your, I, any I, of the dot? Okay. I, I can talk about it. Okay, go ahead. The, the letter of understanding uh, for the unofficial detour between NDOT and the city of Madison, where they're going to be working on State Road 7 as you go up the hill there by Hanging Rock Hill. Uh, it initially was going to be uh, June 1st, closed from June 1st to October 31st, 23rd. And now it's going to be closed from April 11th to October 31st of 2023. So they're going to start next Monday, and we're not going to have access to that road. They are still working on maybe trying to get it open for the during the regatta for the 10K race and some of those events. But, uh, yeah, I, I just got that letter this morning, the official letter. This is a slide correction project. We experienced this same type of uh, closure for the same type of work several years ago. It does divert traffic off of Hanging Rock Hill. Uh, the designated alternate route is essentially to go around the city, across Clifty Drive and down. And then what this agreement does is just acknowledge the fact that there is official detours and unofficial detours. And um, if there are any damage to any city road because of the unofficial detour, they agree to reimburse us for damages to those roads. If that, those that we can, those damages that we can document. Right, and we laid out the unofficial detour as Third Street and Main Street, because that's most of the people that live here, and that's probably the way they go. They'll go over to Michigan Road and go up. But 
the official detour, like you said, is you take Main Street all the way out to 62 and come around. But nobody's going to take that. That's that's the official detour. Yeah. Uh, but we know that. I'm I mean, I'm happy with the fact that they acknowledge their unofficial detours and uh, offering to reimburse us for costs because of all the traffic that's going to be detoured off of Hanging Rock Hill that will create for a very long period of time, honestly, yeah. uh, a lot of pressure on Michigan Michigan well, Road Hill. And I and asked Street. him if, since they were starting early, if they would be finishing Finished that early. amount of time early, and he stated no, they will not be. Mm -hmm. But and we'll continue to work with them relative to um, opening Hanging Rock Hill on that Saturday for the 10K do, run. Joe, do we need an approval or this, or does we need the mayor's signature, or does it need some sort of approval? Okay. Mayor, I just have one question concerning uh, the unofficial detour of Michigan Hill. Will there be additional signage placed? Uh, no, there will be no. It's not an official detour. I'm talking about the yeah. unofficial detour yeah. Yeah. of they, Michigan Hill to keep trucks off of Michigan Hill. Well, they're not supposed to be on there anyway. It'll. Well, uh, I it, know that, it, but <laughs> we won't. Uh, no, the answer to your question is NDOT will properly mark the detour route. It's going to be our responsibility to continue to enforce our local ordinances so that we don't experience truck traffic, semi-truck traffic that's not allowed uh, because of the weight limits on Michigan Hill. So we'll make sure that Chief Wallace knows this. But what they don't want to do is, is provide signage and marking on the unofficial detour because right. then it becomes Correct. the detour that's exactly right. right and that's and that's what the letter says yes right my well, question we is the, is the city going to maybe put place no additional signage signs. we can uh, uh we'll talk definitely talk about that with uh, chief wallace if it if it looks like we're gonna have a problem there uh the weight limit's only i think five tons on uh michigan hill and uh, we don't generally have any semi truck traffic no, not on issues Michigan on Hill. Michigan we've, Hill, but we may because maybe of maybe one or two in the past couple of years that yeah. I know of, and they got stuck. Yeah, I have a, I have a concern at the uh, school up there off Michigan Road because this is going to throw a lot of traffic onto when the buses come out in the afternoons, especially. Yep, I'm not so sure we shouldn't have a police presence up there to help with that exiting of the school because it's a uh, it's a, I mean, it's a mess anyway every afternoon with normal traffic. And then with this thrown that way, I'm not so sure we should well, this maybe is, at least watch that area. Well, we should definitely watch it, and this is also <coughs> going to coincide with when we're doing road work on the northern part of Michigan Hill to install the traffic signal at uh, Sunrise Crossing and Crestwood Drive. So there's lots. It's, it has a potential of creating congestion for right. sure because of closing the, the state road. So it's going to put pressure on us to manage it properly. It's not NDOT's responsibility. Correct. But it does put pressure on us to make sure that we are mon ma managing it correctly. I would advise using 421 when all this starts. <clears throat> Use 421 or 62. We have a motion to approve the letter of understanding with the mayor authorized to sign. And we'll make sure Chief Wallace is aware of this too for management of it when it happens. I'll make a motion and we approve the letter of understanding with NDOT. I'll second David's motion. Any additional discussion? Any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. All right, we have turned over to Joe for the Superb Pilot Club's street closures for uh, Oak Court Days. And um, I'll go ahead and do these kind of in combo because they're exactly the same yeah. as different dates. So resolution number 12B and 13B, 2023, resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, for a street closing regarding the 2023 spring old court days and fall old, old court days. Whereas, where it has been requested and filed by Angela E. Russell on behalf of the Pilot Club of the City of Madison, Indiana, for said club in connection with its old court days to be held from May 25th, 2023 through May 28th, 2023, and September 28th, 2023 through October 1st, 2023. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, that the following street, parking lots, and sidewalks, and parking spaces shall be closed from 6 p.m. on Thursday, May 25th, 2023, through 4 p.m. on Sunday, May 28th, 2023, and the same on September 28th, 2023, uh, through 4 o'clock on Sunday, October 21st, 2023. And those include Second Street from Jefferson Street to Walnut Street. The sitting parking lot located at Jefferson Street and 2nd Street. The sidewalk and parking spaces abutting the east side of Jefferson Street from 1st Street north to Main Street. The sidewalks and parking spaces abutting the south side of Main Street between Jefferson Street and Walnut Street. And the parking spaces in the alley south of the, on the south side of the courthouse. Be it further resolved by the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison that the above uh, Streets and sidewalks are shall be closed under the supervision and control of the pilot club at the years noted or during the times noted um, above. Good morning. Welcome. Um, first of all, congratulations on your 50th anniversary of your celebrating the founding of the pilot club here locally. Describe a little bit about pilot club if you don't mind so that the community can understand all the uh, uh, philanthropic work that you're doing across town well pilot club like he says has been around for 50 years and we have done all kinds of service things we have the old court days and that money goes back to the community in jefferson county we have do things such as going to the convalescent homes and playing playing bingo with them and doing arts and crafts with them and then we also donated a um, it's like for people that are in a wheelchair, a swing at Hickory Creek. We helped with the hospital in several different ways. Um, well, I want to thank you too so for the donation the you made to the city. The, the youth shelter yes. was a really big deal, and that was one mm -hmm. thing that Dee Gogger was very involved in. We also do things for the Madison State Hospital. We've done several things for them. We do a lot of things for the city of Madison and our movies and those type of events. What else? I'm drawing a RSVP, um, all kids can. Yeah, well, we, we try to get. Garden Club that's just newly established out in Hanover and it's starting to really pick up out there. There's so many things that I'm just like drawing a blank. Um, yes, we, we love to help for a lot of things that have to do with brain injuries or brain diseases, and that's what the club was originally founded on, and it is an international organization. So we also do scholarships for local people. Um, in all of the local schools, we give a scholarship for them. Underwear trade all the schools so that there's socks, underwear, sweatshirts. As being a teacher for years, I know that's very important, and a lot of kids would also come to school without socks, but we've done that for years and years. Make sure that it's at the nurse's station so that they can go, and it is important. <laughs> it sounds like it might not be. Well, there's tons of other things, but I can't mm -hmm. think of Well, I was very happy to give a proclamation recognizing all your all's efforts to our community. and. Also want to personally thank you for donations you've made directly to the city of Madison because we did some uh, electrical upgrades and par parking lot improvements with that money that helps facilitate you know, the events for your spring and uh, fall or court days. Board, do you have any questions? Well, I don't have a question. I have a concern because I noticed last year that the, of course, the trucks are getting larger. And when they come down Jefferson Street and they make that turn east, they're within a couple of feet of your all's tents and your displays and your vendor setups and that just really makes me nervous because there's just there's kids there and there's people there I just, I just worry about somebody getting run over and killed right there and I was just hoping that there was a way we could get off of Main Street and satisfy you guys without I mean, you know, don't want to disrupt you it's a great festival have you given that any thought yes um, we have, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, unless no, no. you want to deal okay. with those long-term vendors. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. We have thought about it, but the long-term vendors on Main Street, 
if you try to tell them, oh, go down to the like, yeah. parking lot or oh, go to another street, they're just going to be gone. So they'll, they'll be gone because that's where they want to be. Is and there, is we're there aware that it's close, but we also have put up the barricades yeah. behind and all of them. we can some extend that a little bit, maybe, because you're concerned mostly with the turn. Yes, because they get very, very close to you. And, and you know, it used to be when y'all first started, uh, you know, the tractor trailer was 48 feet. Now I think they're up to 60, 62 feet. Um, we'll see. So they're, they're a lot, I mean, can um, see about scrunching people down and dealing with that fallout and then making that a it'd, it'd they, be, it'd last be perfect year when they had the 56 closed sign it was a oh okay game. yeah that was it too. that was it yeah yeah <coughs> that's my only concern i'm glad you guys are in town or staying in town with your right. program we'll, we'll continue to put the cones and caution tapes outside of the back of the vendors tents there on okay. main street anything to create awareness for safety would be important as they as carl sanders lock truck traffic down through there yeah, we'll I mean, you know, I mean, they're not going 40 mile an hour, but you know, with children and, and all that, uh, they, they get very, very close to it. Okay. Yes. But uh, anyway, if you would take that in consideration, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 12B dash and 12, 12 and 13 uh, dash 2023. And they do have an uh, event safety plan on file, which Hannah's worked with them, and it's fine. Okay. I'll second Carl's motion. Any discussion? Comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, guys. Keep up the wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To also be uh, resolution 14B for 14B. I think it's the next one. You don't have Sorry. one on. I just showed resolution up this number morning. 14B 2023, resolution of the Board of Public Works and Safety of the City of Madison, Indiana, regarding a uh, closing a portion of an alley between 215 and 217 East Main Street. Whereas there has been a request filed by Ian Combs on behalf of Paint Pros for permission to close a portion of the alley between buildings located at 215 East Main Street and 217 East Main Street in connection with repairs to be made to the Masonic Building uh, from March 27, 2023 through April 27, 2023. Um, and they're asking that the alleys be closed daily from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. from March 27th 2023 through April 27th 2023 for work to be performed and um, that alley is between the buildings located at 215 East Main Street and 217 East Main Street running north and south um, to between the buildings and it shall be closed in the supervision control of pink pros for the year 2023 good morning and who are you hey good morning I'm Ian Coombs oh hey Ian good morning nice to meet you uh, describe the work that you're doing and specifically the type of equipment be there that because that's you know we're really looking to see if there's an opportunity to reopen the alley after you do your work during the day yes, uh, so maybe describe Ian. thank you for being here describe what you're that's fine. gonna be doing um, yeah I'm the one that uh, painted the front of the building um, and did all the repair work there and then we ran out of time that was in December and I didn't ask for permission prior mm -hmm. to that <laughs> and had that area blocked okay the, so this year we want to make sure that we're complying with everybody and we're just going to block that quarter size alley and we just need to paint those windows down through there and some of that stuff up top and then move around to the back side. So really we only have about two weeks of work to do if uh, the weather will work with us. That's why I asked for a full month. Gotcha. Ian, relative to the equipment, I mean, you're using a lift or a scaffolding or yes, ladders? Uh, the same lift that I used on the front. It's a 60 okay. foot JLG lift. So is this something that for during the uh, at you have you as you finish the work for the day that then the alley could reopen yes, rather sir. than so it's uh, not a continuous closing right. for a whole month period including weekends it's really during the hours in which you're w actually working on the building yes sir okay from um, what I asked for for eight to four thirty or eight to five 
Okay. And usually that alley there is uh, blocked a lot because of the, the business that they do there. They, they are always blocking that Dropping alley. Dropping things, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, a lot of, and I have um, barricades for front and back. I'll, I'll have all the signs and everywhere, and everybody around there knows that we're going to be working there. Okay. So. And you're and just looking, what you, your work would be like Monday through Friday? Yes, sir. So Saturdays and Sundays. No, Saturdays and Sundays. Won't even be around there. Yes, sir. So after 5 o'clock, you're... Park here at the mobile crane. At five o'clock, you're going to be down Hinkles. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll be able to pull that up out of the way, too. We have a space for it. And, so. and during that period of time, if there is something that happens, we'll do someone there can operate it and move it out of the way. Yes, in case sir. you have an emergency vehicle or something that needs to get through there. Yes, sir. And uh, the people that own the building there are not very far away. They'll, they, they can be called. Awesome. And leave numbers for them, too. So. Good. Good deal. Yeah. David, got any questions? Nope. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, this process hasn't delayed you on your work. Uh, it did, but the rain does too. So. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, you'll get some sunshine tomorrow, and you can yes, sir. get at it really get good. And, and get out of there, <clears throat> you guys. I'll make a motion. We approve Resolution 14B 2023 for uh, the street closing between 215 and 217 East Main. Ian, thanks for being here All today right, too. By I'll way. second that motion. Any discussion, comments, or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Ian, thank you very much. <clears throat> There's one on here. Uh, we have one more that's not on the agenda, and this is with Earth Shaping LLC as a requester. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, what, what's your name, sir? Lenny Hale. Oh, hi, Lenny. Uh, describe to us. So what we have is a, an application we received from Earth Shaping LLC uh, by Lenny Hale to close half of Mulberry Street. Yeah, it's close not, quite, to east. It's not quite half. It's not quite It's a sidewalk and probably eight feet off the sidewalk. Excuse me? It's, it's a side, the whole sidewalk and then eight feet off the sidewalk. Oh, okay, it's gotcha. A, so it's, it's not the, the street technically will still be open. Yeah. You're just going to have a partial <clears throat> partial closing. I'm assuming you're going to have it fenced. Fenced Is that what it is with some maybe some um, markers and to alert people that it's closed? Yes. Okay. Uh, and this is for uh, partial or for demolition of the structure. Yeah. This is the, the part of the street. The, the, the wall is staying the brick wall. It's a demolition from. Are the, you talking about the brick facade, the yep. front facade? Yep. So describe what this is, because honestly, this is about 25 years in the making, and I'm glad that you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, so, Lenny, describe what the project is, sir. Um, Michael Neal hired me to do a demo, and he wanted to keep the brick wall to keep the face of the, the original structure. And he's uh, put doing a steel building behind it. Now this is the Scott Industrial Building that's been essentially in that collapsed yeah. state of, of uh, dilapidation for a couple decades, decades or longer, I would think. So you uh, could have some bracing. Yeah, we're going to put a that brick we're gonna wall put a bracing up. holding the wall. It looks okay. solid, but we're going to put a bracing anyway. Okay. So you're preserving the front facade yes. and then it's eliminating the damaged, uh, collapsed structure that's been there for. 20 plus years yes. and uh and then we'll be rebuilding a steel structure behind the facade yes fantastic and It'll pace have pace have program is supporting yep. the part of supporting this so thank you guys for the investment in that so basically what you're asking for is a sidewalk closure and the parking and the parking it, spots yeah. the, build, the, the wall is only like, i think 16 feet tall so okay yeah. i don't have an issue at all and, I'm, and when will you begin this uh, is it uh t tomorrow tomorrow yeah <laughs> the sun when the sunshine <laughs> comes out, you're we ready to, to start it before I think the 13th, because there's a time time frame with the face grant it has to be started. Right, 90 days I think is the is the beginning date for face grants. And again, thank you uh, for who's the owner of that property? Uh, Mike O'Neill. Mike O'Neill. I want to thank him personally for taking on that project because there's a lot of investment happening in that corridor, and uh, this is a, a great. Uh, investment that's going to help beautify Mulberry Street. Sure. I would go ahead and approve it, and, and maybe and not. The correction: There's a the time frame. It's 8 p.m. to 5 p.m. It says 8 to 8. On 8 there. p.m. to 5 p.m. And I'm assuming though you're going to leave the fence up the fence continuously. Is the time, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I'm saying just the work hours. <clears throat> gotcha. Okay, 8. P okay. Well, I make motion we approve, <clears throat> we approve the closing of the sidewalk and the parking adjacent to that sidewalk to do the construction. At the on First Street there, Earth Shaping LLC. Yes, it'll be uh, yes for Earth Shaping LLC for the former Scott Industrial uh, property. I'll second Carl's motion. Any additional discussion, comments, or questions? 
Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Lenny, thank you so much. Thank you. Keep us posted if you need anything, okay? Thank you. All right, last item uh, for new business is Joe is going to share with us uh, a matter of DuPont Water Company, Inc. versus the City of Madison. Joe, yes. do you have that document? I do. Okay. I do. <clears throat> um, just briefly for the board's information, um, there was a, a complaint grab that filed. Door. Grab that door, please. Uh, complaint filed in federal court um, by representatives on behalf of DuPont Water Company versus the City of Madison. And what this uh, complaint, a little background, um, it essentially is involved um, with who can or who has the ability to provide water to the Jefferson County Jail is what it is in a, in a, in a nutshell. And uh, there are some claims in there that this is uh, DuPont's district. Um, and uh, we are not, uh, certainly not admitting to, to anything and, uh, and don't necessarily believe that uh, the city has done anything in the wrong um, in this juncture. Um, a little bit of background, the jail's been going on, the jail project's been going on for two plus years now. And there's been communications back and forth between the jail and the city of Madison with regard to providing water and, um, and providing water. And there's also been some conversations with DuPont um, all, all along the way. And when it came down to the point of uh, the jail needing water and to the jail's nearing its approach to do so, um, that um, the city of Madison was prepared and had the capability of providing that water. And so we have we are doing so and so that's at the request of the at the, at county. the request of the county yeah and so um, we're we're doing so and we, feel <coughs> that we uh, have the ability to do so and will um, likely continue to do so until uh, we are uh, either feel that we cannot or feel that it uh, does not uh, does not make sense to do so but we are uh, in the process of working through this and uh, gathering information and um, and seeing what uh, what, what the options are, uh, but uh, it's a it's not a uh, it's not a simple matter. There's always complexities with any lawsuit, um, but the one thing we do know is we provide the vast majority of the water to all the um, areas in, in that area, and this was on an area that we have uh, and we frankly been providing water in that area. Dupont so. Dupont Water is one of the three rural water resellers who buy our water and resell it and um, as Joe was indicating you know this construction project has been going on for a couple of years and uh, now they actually have to uh, hook the jail up to water service for consumption and, and fire suppression and uh, asked, asked uh, city permission to tap into its water main. I have a question if the county commissioners requested us to be the providers I don't understand the direction of the DuPont Water Company's suit. Shouldn't it be towards the county and not towards the city? Well, um, I would say that the county may and could be potentially um, brought in on this. Um, you know, we're certainly uh, in communication with some folks at the county um, um, with regard to this. Um, I think the suit as it currently stands is it's a question, or they are questioning our right to provide water to them. Um, water is, um, there are some some cases out there and some laws out there that talk about areas and where you have the right to provide water. So that's that's the question um, that, that we have. But we're, that the county is certainly going to be involved with this. And I think the county's interest in this um, is frankly to, who can provide them the water at the cheapest rate and uh, that's what the county's interest is. The, the common sense is if we sell water to DuPont for them to bring it south then to the jail, then they're going to inflate the cost of that water. Correct? I mean, that's Could common be. sense, right? Could be. I don't, uh, yeah. you know, I, I don't know what DuPont would actually sell it to them. We don't, we don't know those things. No, I know. So. But I just, I wouldn't think they'd sell it at a loss. Um, and their main headers and all that, for the supply lines, do they match up with the counties? I with the cities. Oh, do you mean 
DuPont's. Brian, you want to maybe where come up and it can help answer some of these questions? <clears throat> Yeah, well, yeah, what's the size no, of their mains? No, it, it's my understanding they do not have the lines in the ground to so provide water service to, project, to the jail. Then. Yeah, they would have to do the project so they don't, to provide they don't, that. Okay. They want to be a supplier, but they're not But really. like I said, that's their that, that's my understanding, I mean, without knowing where their lines are. But I, I do not think they currently have but the, the lines in ready. the ground. The city is ready right now to be a provider. We already are. And they're, they're already hooked up to our lines, okay. fire service and water service. Fire service is unmetered, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, yes, we have a 12-inch line out there. 12-inch line. Okay. Yeah, and I think, but now this is speculation on my part. I think they have maybe a two or three-inch line. Hmm. And they are using our water right now. The jail, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, they're on our sewer also out there too. So. Right. Didn't the county commissioners? request water rate proposals from us and DuPont? Correct, back um, in March of 2021, maybe. So two years ago? Yes. So how, what was the result of that? I've just Well, we provided curious. an answer and DuPont did not respond. Okay. So they could easily then charge three times what? As far as I know, DuPont did not respond. I mean, I don't know what happened between the commissioners and DuPont, so I don't want to speak for them. Yes, but. I understand. Joe, does DuPont have a specific map of where they provide water? Uh, we have not been provided that. Um, so Correct. if they do, we've not seen a record of it or been provided it. And I checked with the state governments where a lot of water conservancy districts and sewer districts record their maps at the state level, so everybody knows what they are. But they did not have one when I contacted them, but that's been two and a half years ago when I contacted them for a, a DuPont map. They said they do not have one. Who provided uh, water to Robus Leather when it was there? Oh, the city of Madison. And minimum, if they didn't even, if they weren't ready, you, you could look at two year delay then on their water supply coming to the jail easily probably with all the permitting and things of that nature i don't know where they would tap on or where they have to run the yeah, line that, they service. would have to engineer that themselves yeah, yeah. Not, not, it'd yeah. be great if their engineers got with the county's engineers on the jail and they figured that out before suing us for providing water so the jail could open because the jail is going to be opening in a couple of months and i think that's why there's a you know there was a you know, point of no return for the commissioners to get water and fire service to the jail. Who provides the water to uh, New Madison Brewery? The city of Madison. So but, we'll, we'll, we're going to do the best we can. We'll see what we can come. You know, obviously the goal is to see if there's a way to 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 uh, to see what uh, if there is a re quick resolution. But you know, sometimes there may not. This could go on for a bit, so we will keep the board updated and uh, and uh, move move in the uh, best direction that we see fit for the city. Yep, we'll uh, take this through the uh, federal court process and see where it lands, and talk with the commissioners, and hopefully they're talking to Dupont Water and figuring out why we're here where we are. Board, any other comments or questions on the Dupont? water complaint against the city of Madison but I think you're right uh, it you know the they'll mark the water up that we sell them and it'll just drive taxes up to support the operating costs at the jail practically speaking anyway yeah, I think that's important for the taxpayer to, yeah. to know okay <clears throat> Uh, no further discussion on that. We'll move on to mayor's comments. Not a whole lot to add other than uh, there's also work going on on Ferry Street as part of a State Highway 56 uh, drainage improvement project. We're currently reviewing an agreement. I'll let the board know an agreement from NDOT uh, for a temporary transfer of Ferry Street. We haven't worked through that yet, but that's another matter that NDOT um, has asked the city's consideration of. There's lots of 
work happening and uh, with NDOT investments across the city and, and on the hilltop. Uh, they just had a public public meeting last week for some proposed improvements at Clifty Drive and Michigan Road, and uh, we'll keep keep us posted. Mindy, I might ask you while you're here, any update on CCMG? I don't have an update. I know that they will be awarding sometime this month or early, early May, but um, I keep getting paperwork, different pieces of documentation related to our road asset inventory and um, ADA and Title VI compliance and making sure all that is in place. Just checking the boxes for um, and then close out on our last project. So all those boxes have to be checked to make sure that we qualify to apply, which we do. Um, so I know they're going through all those uh, procedures to make sure everything is clear before they make announcements. So we should know soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you drive around town, you'll see lots of sidewalks, new sidewalks, um, where there were some poorly rated sidewalks existing. So we're working through our sidewalk asset management plan for the worst rated sidewalks. And then uh, work continues on our gateway and the riverfront, the overlook, uh, the um, Mulberry Street Arts Corridor. So Crystal Beach will be having a groundbreaking here soon uh, once we finish the state permitting process. So a lot of investment happening all across all across the city and on the hilltop. I don't have anything else to add. I'll open it up to public comment. If there's anyone here would like to address the Board of Public Works and Safety, please come to the podium and identify your name and address and uh, let us know what your concern is. Our next meeting will be Monday, April the 17th. I'll I want to thank everybody for being here. Okay. I'll make a motion we adjourn. Second that motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.